in listen-only mode. Okay, everyone, I believe we are ready to begin. My name is Rob Alsama, VP of Marketing for Herico Golf, and I'll be your moderator for today's Herico webinar titled The Basics of Measuring Shaft Length. The webinar will be led by Herico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Give you a little bit of background on Jeff. Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in his best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. Your audio settings are muted, which means we cannot hear you, so don't worry about coughing or phones ringing in the background. If you have any questions or difficulties listening to or viewing the webinar, feel free to type them in the question or chat box located in your GoToWebinar dashboard. Because we have limited time, we are saving the question and answer period for the end when Jeff has completed his talk. But again, please type your questions in the box as they arise, and we will get to them at the end. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It is being recorded and will be on our blog at blog.haricogolf.com and youtube.com slash golf, And it will be up in about two hours. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Rico Golf's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Thank you, Rob. And thank, of all, thank all of you for taking the time to attend today's webinar on measuring shaft length. In our last club making webinar, we discussed the basics of gripping and regripping which wasn't exactly in the order of the club assembly process. After all, the club needs to be cut to length before you put a grip on it. But as I've said before, regripping or gripping is a first exposure that most of those will be into uh, club making and repair, and that can be taught at any time. This should be a fairly short webinar, since measuring the, the proper length should be pretty straightforward. Word, well, it should be at least. Hopefully after I explain how, measuring for length will become second nature instead of consternation for many first time club makers or those new to club making and repair. Why is measuring length uh, accurately so important? Well, if there's any one specification that's more important than all the others, it's club length. It affects more parameters than any other. The length influences the lie of the club, the swing weight, overall weight, and finally the flex. Being off just a little could be the difference between a golfer hitting a club well, topping the ball, or even hitting the ball fat. This doesn't even take into account how the club feels, which is extremely important as well. This is the reason why we want to adopt a method that you can duplicate time and time again to obtain consistent measurements. So what we're going to go over today, I have a little technical difficulty it's turning the screen there, is how to measure, uh, or how length is measured by most individuals, measuring the length of a putter and why it is different, tips for measuring pre-assembled clubs, and jigs and fixtures to help uh, you work more efficiently and with greater accuracy. Length can either be measured as an assembled club, or on a club that is partially built. For starters, let's say a person picks up a club and hits it well. It might be longer or shorter than the club they had been using. That person needs to be able to, or have someone else, accurately measure the length so they may be able to duplicate it. So it's important that there's a universal method of measuring length. To a certain degree, there is. Let's see how the length of the club is measured by most of those in the golf industry. The method most often used involves placing the club in the plane position with the center of the sole touching the ground. This might be a little tricky at first because you may not be able to see the sole from behind the club. Take a look at the slide for a moment and you'll see that the, the club is positioned with the center of the sole touching the ground. See if I can get my little mouse here. The, that illustrates the center of the sole. And when this is done, usually the, the score lines um, will be parallel to the ground here. 
Now, let me turn the slide for a second. I hope you guys can see it. And we're going to show you the incorrect setup positions of the sole resting out near the toe and the heel. And we'll see why this is important after our next step. Next, we'll take our 48 inch ruler and place it um, along the back side of the club with the correct lie angle with the tip of the ruler touching the ground by the club's heel. I want you to note that the modern club has a, a rounded or at least a beveled sole in order for it to play effectively of various, various lies so that the heel will be resting off the ground. Long gone are the days when the sole was flat and the heel rested on the ground when you can use the back edge of the heel as a point of reference. Well, let's go back a couple slides here and show you that again. Now you'll notice that the heel of the club is uh, where my hand is over here. And see the nice radius of the sole? That's uh, prominent on most clubs today. Okay. I should tell you this up front. A yardstick's not going to be long enough unless you're only building junior clubs. And a tape measure is going to be too flexible to be used successfully. Therefore, the 48-inch ruler becomes the standard measuring stick. I have shown two views here. The first view is a side view if you're holding the ruler at the end. And the other is the top view of what you might see from behind the club. And as you can see from there, um, you can't really see the sole very well from that position. Now the final length is measured at the edge of the grip cap. Um, at least that's how I'm going to teach it. So where exactly is the edge of the grip cap? In some cases it's very noticeable where you can feel an edge. In other cases uh, the end of the grip is radiused. Think of the edge as the part just before the radius or the curvature at the very butt end of the grip. Let me try to show that with the, the hand here. It's right along that line that's on this view. And then over here, kind of got it at an angle so you can see where it kind of touches the, um, the ruler. But what we're trying to do is eliminate this round part up on top. But whatever you believe that is the, uh, the edge of the grip cap, be consistent. When it comes to length, 